It says I'm live. I think it says I'm live. Well, hey, everyone. I am trying something very, very new here. Um, if you are watching this live, thank you for taking the time. Um, if you're watching the replay of this, my name is Matthew. I am an architecture and interior design photographer based in Kansas City. And yeah, as promised, I had, um, I had a total of three, three people <laughs> ask me about um, a photo I posted recently going into the, the edits and some of the details of it. Uh, this photo in question was kind of unique because it was it's a black kitchen. It's very, very heavily dark. It's very, very black all around. The walls are painted black. The countertops are black. Um, yeah, so it was just kind of a challenge. And then on top of it, if you notice, if you saw in the original photo, one side of it is just blasted with a ton of natural light. Um, on the right side of the frame, but then if if you're experiencing this line of photography at all, you know dark areas just soak up a ton of light. So the light fall off from the right side to the left was pretty extreme. So anyway, um, yeah, I think if you guys hold on one second, I want to double check the live stream, make sure everything's working correctly. Yeah, says I'm up. All right, cool. All right, awesome. Yeah, says I'm up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll right. do that. <laughs> I don't want to keep hearing myself. Okay, so let's uh, let's screen share here. Let's go over into Lightroom. I'm gonna breeze through Lightroom pretty quick because I've I've already done a lot of the major lifting when it comes to uh, a lot of the settings in Lightroom, and so. Um, Everything looking good. Okay, cool. And you guys can hear me. Okay, I want to double check on that too. So I have a mic right here. It's just out of frame. So I want to double check that. So yeah, let me know audio wise if you're able to hear me. All right. Um, but let's go through some of the the straight out of camera images here. And if you're looking at this, this is probably one of the least impressive images you've ever seen <laughs> for uh, from an architectural design photographer. And yeah, you are seeing a little bit of the how the sausage gets made, a peek behind the curtain, so to speak. So um, I'll give you a little bit of backstory here because we've got the time. Um, and then just a heads up to this video is probably going to be probably more on the boring side relative relative to some of the other editing videos that I've done because um, yeah, you're, you're going to see me do it live throughout the whole process. So anyway, um, the, uh, how do I put this? The client has been kind of, okay, cool. Client's been kind of iffy as far as, um, whether to do lights on and lights off, you know, what looks best for, for their type of photos. And I said, I told them, well, what I'll do is I'll take, I'll take the shoot the space lights on, do a bracket of shots there. Ideally, I think it's going to look best with lights off, but worst case scenario, I have the lights on images in my back pocket if you need them. So that's why I started with this. So they were on. Obviously, they have kind of cool under counter lighting in here. That's probably the biggest thing that's missing from the natural light photo. Um, but I just I wasn't too concerned with it because I think the lights off look was going to be the best. So we'll go through this real quick. Um, yeah, I just kind of bracket through some of these and just go from super, super bright to super, super dark. And then uh, every now and then someone asks about exposing for the windows. And here's here's a good case in point why I don't do that. If I pull down the highlights, I mean, this is what's on the other side of the glass here. It's just not impressive at all. So let's Let's get rid of that argument. There's really no need to see anything on the other side of the glass. I don't mind seeing a, a little bit of what's back there, but you definitely don't need to see the detail of it. Um, the one thing, though, when it comes to the windows that I really want to make sure I take care of is the just the excessive bloom. And we've got a little bit here. You'll see on the um, yeah where I'm waving the, the cursor. There's a little bit of bloom there, but... I think in the end product, there's actually still a little bit of bloom. And again, I don't, th I don't think it's something that's going to make or break the photo altogether. But uh, anyway, we'll go through this. So then I shut all the lights off. Now, here is a big part of the challenge. So 
every now and then again, somebody asks, well, why do you do all this stuff with flash and all that? Why can't you just do all natural light and, um, you know, and showcase it like that? And sometimes the answer is, yeah, I could. Here's a good example why that just did not work for me in this case. Straight at a camera, I'd say if you covered up, you know, part of the frame, the left side of this frame looks decent, but the right side just looks awful it is just blown out to kingdom come the blooming is off the charts highlights are are crazy so um yeah i just there's no way i could do, uh, leave this straight out of camera i had to do something um even when i tone it down see even though when i start to tame the highlights on the right side of the frame i really start to lose the exposure on the left side because it's such a dark space or dark tones within the space excuse me and so this is what I kind of, I tried to do my best. Again, I've mentioned this in previous videos where I will take a frame and do my best to try to edit that frame as if I had a gun in my head and I could only deliver one single image straight at a camera. And this is what I did here. So uh, white balance at just under 5,500 with a tint of plus 12. I pulled down the highlights all the way to negative 60, bumped up the highlights to plus 60, and then just uh, adjusted accordingly with the white. So that's why we're barely getting anything blown out here. There's still a lot of blooming here. We're even starting to get some flare here in the, the upper right side of the frame. Uh, blacks, I'm... I'm okay with this area on the left side being completely black, totally fine. I bump up texture, and because we're going this extreme with the highlights and shadows, I, I bump up the clarity to plus 35. I am I will probably end up using this later, but not for the colors. So I don't really do anything with vibrance or saturation. Uh, as far as the transform part, I take care of the barrel distortion, the, anything that's left there, and then I adjusted, got everything squared up, um, you know, make sure the verticals are vertical and everything is that's horizontal is horizontal. So that's pretty much it. So I edit that single frame as if that's going to be the one I'm going to turn in minus the colors, because at this point, I really don't, I could care less about the colors. And that's it for as far as the natural light or natural light frames. Then I start, I, I go into the flash mode mentality. Now I've got the 100% natural light stuff completely out of the way. I'm going to start editing this and start setting things up accordingly to bring in the flash, to start kind of shaping the light exactly the way I want. Um, thanks guys, awesome to see you live. Edit by you, glad I got home in time. <laughs> I appreciate you guys hopping on. I really do. This is the first time it, I'm, I'm trying this out. Um, I'm a little bit nervous, as you might be able to tell. So, um, yeah. But I, I appreciate you bearing with me if I screw this up. So, uh, let's see. Where were we? On this frame. Okay. So, then I start taking the exposures down a little bit more. And I think this is about where I leave it. Yeah. So again, I'm not too bothered by this blooming that we're getting here on these these windows. It's not that big of a deal to me. I really don't care that much. I don't think anyone, any client is going to look at this photo and go, you know, oh my God, what are you doing? Other photographers will, and you might be one of them, but I really don't care because you're not the one paying my bills at the moment the client was on this shoot. Uh, okay, so that being said, this is where I decided to, I'm going to use this exposure as my base. At this point... I have, I don't think you guys can see it, but the way this is shot, this is uh, right now it's at ISO 400. We're pretty much right at 50 millimeters and F10 and we're at one sixth of a second. So this is the exposure that you're getting. Then, ta-da, we start adding flash. And as you may be able to tell through the reflection here in the window, uh, I am using my seven foot Westcott umbrella, that huge, gigantic umbrella. It's cumbersome to set up, but if you're in a space where you're able to use it, it's a huge, huge help because it does a pretty darn good job at mimicking uh, natural light. Now, uh, that being said, some of this isn't perfect, with, and I can't necessarily explain why. I don't think the, the flash was popping directly into the... Um, <laughs> don't be nervous it's just you guys in here that actually does make me feel better thank you um yeah let's see uh, for for this frame because see look there's we're getting some weird um really harsh shadows here and here so maybe 
I got to figure out what I was doing. <laughs> Here we go. This is when we start getting real. So I take basically just copy and pasted some of the settings. The ones that were really, really important to me were, was the squaring things up, the verticals and the horizontals. So I just copied these and started pasting them into the frames that I knew I wanted to use. Some of it's trial and error. Some of it I'm putting the umbrella in different spots of the room just to see what the light fall off looks like. Like this one was decent, but for some reason I did not use it. And I think what I decided as, boom, this is the one that I'm um, going to use as my base. This was the frame. Um, I think I did my best to try to move the Westcott umbrella as far back to the right as I could because I don't think you see it there in the reflection. And then I'd set it up just in the right spot to get that nice semi-natural light fall off. And you'll notice I use the word semi-natural because although this looks nice, it still looks a little flashy and we, we take care of that. Um, oh, thanks guys. Love your videos and your knowledge sharing. Yeah, you're very welcome. Um, I'm terrible at a lot of things, but this is one thing I, I enjoy doing. Apparently, I'm decent at so figure why not share? Um, yeah, so this, aside from the base being mostly dark, this is what I would consider my base with the flash. So then the different thing I did here when the next frame was still there's a good uh, a good amount of light fall off. Although the right side of the frame was decently exposed, the left side still is a little bit on the dark side. So all I did to kind of take care of some of that is just move the umbrella, I think if I remember right, maybe about two or three feet closer to the frame, closer to the shot, still not within the frame, and fire it. And that's why I don't care that it was in this shot because honestly, the only part I really cared exposure wise was the left half or the left side of the frame here. So, um, so really these two, these two right here, this is the main meat of it. Um, th this is what I'm going to, I mean, it's the most two Im most important frames out of this whole editing process. Then after that, um, I did an exposure, uh, this exposure just for the little, I mean, you can barely see it here. It's a little kind of built in breakfast nook sitting area. That's just so I could paint in that area where the breakfast nook looked bright enough. But again, I'm not getting a ton of detail through the window. All, all that really is is just for everything right there. That is, that is basically it. Cool. We got 18 people on. Awesome. Thank you guys for, for hopping on and watching this. Is, I just, I'm so afraid this is going to be boring. <laughs> Uh, what do we got here? Clients wanted to hop in. Uh, I still got to edit this. This is a test shot from the client. Uh, they're an amazing interior design team. Um, he hopped in early. <laughs> so I said, okay, we'll, we'll do that shot later. Now, this is where we start getting a little, this is kind of the nitty gritty. So what I did here at this point is I shot at one two hundredth of a second. And if you're experienced at all with flash, you know that Roughly about 1 over 160, about 1 over 200. That's about what your sync speed is, where you can cut out most, if not all, of your um, your ambient light. Um, I'm going to go off here real quick. So if, if you are using flash in your scenes and you want to do as best you can to remove all of the ambient light, try your best to shoot as the, at the fastest sync speed as possible. Some cameras, it's 1 over 125. Some cameras go up to 1 over 200, and some of them go up to 1 over 250. I don't think there's much that go over 1 over 250 without um, start having to use high-speed sync flashes and stuff like that. We're not, we're, we're not going to get into that. But, um, yeah, so the reason I did this is because now I want to tame some of the areas that the ambient light was going a little nuts on. Case in point was this spot here on the right side of the counter. Um, as you see here, let's see where we are. Where, that's the frame we're at. Even when using the flash frames where I'm bringing the flash in, I mean, if you just look at the spot here where my iPad is set up, the highlights are just still 
insane. It's so crazy the extremes in this shot because you have a super dark kitchen and just these insanely bright highlights. So the point of doing these flash pops like this was to try to tame those highlights as, as extreme as I could, which again was shooting over at one over 200. And then I, all I did was shoot a flash into the ceiling just to light up that part of the countertop. That's it. All I wanted was a frame where, granted, I'm still getting some reflections in the countertop. You, they're going to be there naturally, but I want to I want to at least have exposure where I can paint that in a little bit and tone them down. Uh, I did something here similar. This was mainly for the left side of the frame. I don't think I ended up using this frame, though. Um, same thing here, but again, I don't think I ended up using that frame at all. So really... I only had four frames that I, I use in the final edit, and this is where we're going to start piecing this together. So it was this one, this one, this one, and this one. Oh, I take that back, five. So we're going to grab these five, and we're going to bring them into Photoshop. So one there, one there, three, four, and the last one, five. Tap those and open as layers in Photoshop. Let's read some of the comments here. Don't you're you're my go-to photographer to learn from. So never boring. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, just Jared said, don't even worry about it. LOL. This is all valuable information. You've been killing it lately. Thanks for the live stream. Yeah, you guys are very very welcome. I appreciate it. Um, okay. All right, somewhat of a process to bring them all into Photoshop here. Hey, we're up to 20. Awesome. Speaking of boring, this is the boring part. Watching your computer just bring these layers in a Photoshop. I did have uh, a question for you guys who are watching, who are photographers, because this comes up every now and then. Clearly, I was using Lightroom to do some of the basic adjustments. Are you guys using other programs, too? The other one that pops up a lot is Capture One. And are there huge advantages to Capture One? Is there something I'm missing out on or I'm not quite understanding? If, if there are, let me know um, on the comments here. So contrasty. Now, is that a good thing? Let me know that. Um, because naturally, there's a ton of contrast in this shot with it being a very, very black kitchen. So yeah, let me know. Isaac says, great format, liking the walkthrough. Okay, good. Well, I hope I'm not boring you guys too much. <laughs> All right, let's, sorry, I'm moving everything. I'd like to dive into Capture One, but I haven't really been able to get to use it. Yeah, I just, I'm not familiar with it at all. I don't know if it's uh, that much different than um, Photoshop or Lightroom or not. Okay, so we are in Photoshop now. I'm going to, just from my own peace of mind, reverse these layers. Let's go to Layer, Arrange, and Reverse. I'm going to turn off all these layers. Uh, I want to find where the natural light layer was. Where did that go? It's not that one. Huh. Must have missed it. Hold on. <laughs> Here it is. So is it six? Is it six layers in total? That David likes Lightroom. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think Lightroom's just been kind of the go-to for, for such a long time. Um, but the part that stinks is Adobe just keeps bumping up the prices and you're just kind of stuck. But... Relative to all the other expenses, it's not that huge of a deal. Uh, okay, so that, I think I missed, it might be a total of six frames that we used. Uh, what I was missing was this um, natural light frame. But we're going to we're gonna use this natural light frame at the very, very end. Okay, so let's start off with this. Uh, I actually like... Contrast is nice, but I was wondering if you were going to bring up the shadows at all. Not a whole lot, man. Um, I, th I think you'll see here in the final edit, 
I love highlights and shadows. I think that's what adds dimensionality and texture to a space. When you have everything evenly, granted, this is an extreme, when you have everything evenly lit across the board, as if there was just one gigantic softbox in all directions, it just looks flat. Um, and especially for interior designers, if you're shooting for your interior designers, they want that contrast, at least most of them. I, I can't speak for all, but a lot of them want that mood. They want to showcase different textures and colors. I mean, case in point, look at the texture here. I'm going to zoom in a bit. The texture of these chairs versus the texture of the, the backsplash here. That's the sort of stuff that and especially interior designers want to showcase. If you lift the shadows where those textures start to disappear, interior design clients aren't going to be that happy. Um, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, it was for an interior designer. So, yeah, builders might be different. I, I've noticed uh, builders don't necessarily care as much. And for me personally, builders, a lot of time, they want their shots wider, not necessarily real estate wide. So they may not be as picky as far as mood and atmosphere and all that stuff. But um, let's see. Someone says... Lightroom and Photoshop, Luminar is the best workflow. I've started to dabble a little bit into uh, Luminar. Let me make sure I'm not missing any comments here. Color grading and raw processing and capture ones extremely good, but difference in processing Fuji files. Okay. Yeah. I just, I'm, I don't think I'm that smart to get into Capture One then. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just not that bright of a guy. Um, where did I focus? Uh, I use this brush. <laughs> so I'm at F10. I my I checked my focus on this brush here. And I knew that, uh, especially shooting at F10, it's at 50 millimeters. If I focused on something that was kind of in between the main elements of what I was shooting, everything for the most part would be, uh, would be in focus. Okay, and I apologize, guys, if you can hear this dog in the microphone my neighbor's dog barks constantly sometimes so uh let's see where are we at so this is the one here's what we're gonna do sorry guys you're you're seeing me think out loud here's here's what i like about this i like different things about these two frames they're kind of shot from relatively where the the light was in about relatively the same area you know what I don't, I don't like that bottom one. Get rid of that. <laughs> We're keeping this one. Can't hear the dog. Good. Uh, let's see. Lightroom still in a month, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I do. I do the Lightroom Photoshop package. So I think it's. It might be twelve. Might be fifteen bucks a month right now. Speaking of wide focal length, I'm still having the hardest time deciding which, if I pick up first, the twenty-four millimeters or the seventeen. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna paint with a broad brush. I would go for the 24. Um, if you're shooting 17, if you're shooting a lot of 17 millimeters, let's take a minute to um, pause here. Write this on this. Um, I have at one point I have a 20 millimeter shift lens. I'm using it less and less and less and less. Um, and the other going wider at 17 millimeters, I am running into little to no situations where I need a 17 millimeter shift lens or, or need to shoot something at 17 millimeters where I'm shifting. That being said, the other side of the coin is I, I, I do run into more situations where I need to shoot something around 24 or even narrower and possibly shift. So that's my experience. Again, kind of gun to your head situation. Um, I would just I would go for the 24 over the 17. I think the 24 is going to be more applicable in different scenarios. Um, yeah, I will be saving. I'll be saving the video. Yep. So if you guys have to hop off, don't don't worry about it. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep the video up. Um, even this photo, the textures are naturally dark, so I guess no reason to bring them up if they're not blown out. Um, you could show me the flash frame as your final image. It would be nice. How did you do that? Just so no <laughs> you'll be see. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, guys. I just want to make sure I'm not missing any comments here. Okay. I, this is, I mean, man, this is just, this frame all in itself is, it's probably like 95% of the way there. But like I mentioned before, there's some things that I want to, I want to work out. So what we're going to do on this frame is I'm going to 
cover this with the mask and just change the blend mode here to lighten. And then with a pretty soft and broad brush, bring up the left side of the frame here. I will be surprised if you guys can even see this because the difference is going to be negligible. But I think when you see the on and off difference, let's just do this at 100%. All right, let's see. Let's see the before and after. Then it's after, before, after, before, and after, before, after. Negligible difference, but I think it, it evens the fall off of the light from right to left a little bit more. So we're good there. And then this is the frame where I wanted to just expose for the little breakfast nook. So we're gonna cover this up. I'm not gonna do anything with the blend mode. I'm gonna leave it at normal. And I'm going to change the opacity of this to 20%, still keeping a nice soft brush. Just subtly painting this in. Again, this is probably a, a difference of something that's barely noticeable. But I think when you do the on and off, you might be able to tell. So let's see. See, it's, it's toned down those uh, highlights just a little bit. Something I learned that saves time is using the gradient tool to do masking, for example. Try yeah, I, th I thought about that, and um, I just don't. I don't know why. I'm still a stickler with a brush. You're right. It's $19.95 a month. for Yeah. Got this. I don't know. I wonder if I'm grandfathered into a cheaper price, because I don't think I'm paying $19.95 a month. But I'm definitely not paying $9.95. Um, yeah, and then here's the other thing you notice, too. So... The flares are toned down a little bit by using this breakfast nook frame. And then we're getting a little bit more of the natural uh, tones out of the wall. Here, for some reason, they're super warm and super orangey. But by using this frame, um, they're just, uh, it's back to a little bit more gray. Uh, the other catch is we kind of got rid of, if you'll notice here, you can see the detail on the front of the countertop, but when we use this, it starts to disappear. Let's go in between to kind of tone this down a bit. There we go. Yeah, so a little bit in between. Okay. So for the most part, for the flash frames, um, that's pretty much it. Do you have a tablet or are you, I'm using a mouse. You know, I tried one of those, uh, what, what do they call them, Wacom, Wacom tablets or anything. I I hated it. I did not like it <laughs> at all. And maybe it's just because I'm used to, the, used to the mouse. I Yeah, I'm using just this little standard Apple mouse. So nothing crazy. Okay, now, for the most part, again, we're, we're probably about, 90 some 95 percent of the way done there's not you you might look at this and go well the, the client might love that you could turn that in and they honestly would probably love it um but i think from us photographers we'd look at this and our eyes would automatically be drawn to some of the issues most of the biggest one of which is still this crazy hot spot on the counter so here's what we're going to do mm, let's see let's merge these frames together and I'm with with just this um, kind of lasso tool I'm gonna start drawing around the counter here now here's another issue I wish we would have corrected there on site as you can probably see this counter is pretty dusty um, and unfortunately if, if I remember correctly I think my flash frame you know we're gonna go around this a little bit I want to even get rid of the bloom. That's cup of cheese. This, this counter is so crazy bright. Um, you know, let's go down here. Um, yeah, there's just, there was a ton of dust on there. Um, and I wish we would have taken care of that on site. There's always something, isn't there? And I think the flash frames... Yeah, they tone they tone down the dust. Yeah, they tone down the dust a little bit. Okay, so here's what we're go, gonna do. We'll hold down Option. Nope, 
the other way. Perfect. Okay, so there's a real rough uh, cut there of uh, the other frame on top of the other one. Oh yeah, it's looking significantly better already. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to refine this with the brush and then we will, I actually like the slightly darker tones it's getting out of the wood here. So, but we're going to have to be subtle because that's, it's still quite a difference here. So we're going to keep the brush really soft. Nope, other way. And we're going to blend these two together. Because we don't want any harsh lines showing up. Let's see what we can do here with the pillow. See you guys, isn't this exciting? This is just riveting, riveting stuff. I don't know how you're not on the edge of your seat watching this. <laughs> um, okay. Luminos luminosity mask might work. You'll you'll the, you're gonna see here in a bit what I'm gonna do with the final touch. Um, I wanted to get this this vein back here, um, and I'm not sure if a luminosity mask would have corrected that. I want to make sure that the texture or this this vein and the texture of the countertop was still there. Um, something might be fun to try. <laughs> Cancels, cancels an order from the Wacom tablet. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, use the iPad as a secondary display, being able to use the Apple Pencil. Drink. Yeah, possibly. I'm just so used to using the, the mouse there. Um, okay, back to the edit here. I'm So I'm not going to leave it like this, but I, I'm just doing a real soft brush here. To get rid of this harsh line yeah i know this looks like we've burnt part of the wood but don't worry we'll fix it i just want stuff to be subtle and for the blend to look borderline seamless okay and then yeah definitely here so we're gonna get rid of let's see there we go and I think just looking at the counter, let's do a before and after here. Yeah, see, the, it, we, we toned down some of the uh, that dust showing up. Obviously, we toned down the highlights here a bit. Um, I think uh, the, the problem I'm running into, though, God, it's just is this bloom that's blending over into the pillows. So let's let's reverse the brush color here. And see if we can kind of just subtly blend this in. We'll probably bring some of that bloom back, but as, as long as it's not as crazy, as extreme as it was before, we'll be all right. How's that? Yeah, see some of that bloom's coming back. That's about as much as I want to do for the counter. All right, let's stand back a bit and do before and after. Yeah, that this part still looks burnt. Okay, and then this is just overkill. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to take this flash layer, and then I am going to just repaint just the flash layer in with a pretty hard line um, on the counter. And I'm not as concerned with the bloom on this one because as you'll see, concerning luminosity masks and natural um, exposures, we're gonna bring some of it back. Because in reality, yeah, that, that reflection's there. And then let's just paint this back in. There we go. And yeah, now if you go in real tight, <laughs> it looks kind of odd. Because wait a minute, there's a there's a bloom without uh, without any crazy highlights. But you got to zoom in that far. I mean, 
Ta-da, look at that. that that's pretty decent. Um, yeah, man, that's pretty good, if I don't say so myself. Um, yeah, so as far as using the blend in the flash, that's pretty much it there. But therein lies the problem is that it looks nice, but it looks a little flashy. So we're going to go back over here. We're going to grab this natural light layer, and I'm going to drag it over and throw it on top. Now, the decision you have to make is where are you going to blend this in and where are you not going to blend this in? I mean, if, you, if I wanted to, I could just leave the layer there, change it to luminosity, and maybe just adjust the slider. But as you can tell, some of the drama is now gone from the chairs there in front. Um, but some of the realism comes back on, say, the little tchotchkes and knickknacks on the back counter up against the backsplash. The plants and a little bowl of fake fruit or potatoes or whatever that is. Clearly, I don't want it on the counter because some of those those uh, those bits of dust are coming back. Um, yeah, so we're gonna be we're, we're gonna be selective with this. I'm gonna use a mask and I'm gonna cover this up, and we're just gonna be real selective with a soft brush deciding where to bring back some of these natural highlights and shadows. I know for one, yeah, there's kind of a cool shadow that come, extends over here from the hood. But look at this. We're introducing another problem I'm going to have to deal with here. Um, if you can tell, some of that color is missing from what was in shadow before, but we're going to fix that. This shadow here looks a little bit too harsh. Yeah, see, we'll paint some of that natural luminosity in. Uh, what was the question here? Was there a reason you didn't use a scrim to eliminate the reflection completely on the countertop just to be able to control its brightness even more? Uh, time. Time was probably the big issue here. Um, this was a house where obviously the client was already living and I had taken up a lot of time on the living room shot which is my previous video where I talk about the editorial look literally this is just a complete 180 of that view if you saw that video of the editorial look living room this is if you moved the camera a little bit forward and turned it right around this is the view that you would see so um, I don't use polarizer filters um, because I take care of them like this and I, I just haven't run into a ton of scenarios where I go, oh my goodness, I wish I would have used a polarizer filter. Maybe I should. I, I'm not poo-pooing on it. It's just something I I haven't really considered that much. And maybe I should. Here's another instance where, yeah, I want to bring back that natural shadow. I mean, look at the difference there with just this little bowl of fruit or what, potato, whatever that is. See, I mean, even though it's a fairly soft shadow from the flash, it's still not natural. So we wanted to bring some of that back. And if I look, we might have an alignment issue. <laughs> I just, as I'm fixing this, I keep coming up with more and more problems. Uh, okay. Might be negligible, but oh well. Okay, and let's see. I know on the knobs, we're going to add some of that back because clearly it's a lot brighter on the right side of the frame. Awesome work, Matthew. Appreciate it. Love the video. Yeah, I, I hope you guys got something out of that that last video with the um, with the you know the editorial look that living room shot. That and, and to go back to answer one of the previous questions. Yeah, we took so much time setting up that shot. Kind of the these other hero shots of the space. We were kind of hard pressed because there was a set time we had to be off site um, for the clients, the the homeowners to basically take the property back. Uh, again, I'm not going to mess with the countertop here on the right side. That's where a lot of that dust was. I might here just to bring back some of that realism. And let's see on the hood area. Nothing really changes there. Yeah, I mean, that might be it. See, just a completely different look. You love my CPL. It just just lives on my camera. I love the colors it gives me and how it cuts reflections from pictures and such on walls. Yeah, the, the other, here's the other problem. I, I know good polarizing filters cost a lot and I use a, a variety of different lenses. So I'm assuming I have, I have to buy a polarizer for that fits each one of the lenses, correct? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I could be. 
Um, I'm just kind of picking this apart. I notice, here's, here's something I notice. I'm bringing back some bloom on the faucet here that I don't want. So let's go to a brush. Why is it not showing up? There we go. And let's definitely get rid of it here on the faucet. There we go. And I think as far as luminosity and stuff goes, I might leave it like that as far concerning the shadows and things like that. So yes, yeah, see, we're still getting some blooming here and it doesn't quite match up. Well, you know, like I said, let's bring some of that back. We got to bring it back here on the counter. Got to be careful because I don't want the dust to show up. But I still want to see that vein there in the countertop. Let's zoom in and double check this. Nope. That should be good. I think you can buy a filter for your largest lens and then buy a step up filter for each thread size of your smaller lens to adapt a single filter to all your lenses. Uh, okay, that being said, let me know the brands then because if you look on Amazon, there is a ton to choose from and, I, and the reviews are all over the place. They honestly are. Some people love them and then the next review straight down, someone's hating on it. So I don't know where to start with polarizers is you can get an adapter. Yeah, that's what I use. So then any lens I have the ability to polarize. Okay. Um, so as far as flash and luminosity, I'm thinking that's where I'm going to leave it. But I mentioned previously, we introduced some issues here and the one is up here on the, the um, uh, cabinets. So I'm going to sample the color of where it looks normal. And then, um, I'm just going to brush some color back into this because it looks gray. It's just like a hard difference between the warm wood tones and then just bleak gray. And that's not correct. Look, we yeah, see, we're even getting it there on the left side of the knobs. So let's take a brush and keep it real soft. Let's just put it at 100. I know this is going to look funky. Let's leave it at that. We'll deselect, change the blend mode of this to color. But clearly, um, this looks way oversaturated now. So we're going to take this down all the way to zero. And I'm just going to eyeball it and bring it up until I notice that that bleak gray is gone without it looking overkill and oversaturated. Let's do 40. I think 40 does the trick. Yeah, that looks good. And that being said, let's go over here and then also add that color back in with these knobs or the handles. We're probably running into the issue down here as well. Joining late, not sure if you talked about this yet or will at the end. What are your thoughts about windows when they have unimportant, unflattering views? Wipe them out or just leave it? Yeah, I did talk about that a little bit at the beginning, James. Um, yeah, if it's case in point, you can probably even tell here on this window, there is just this crummy old looking wood fence of the neighbor on the other side of the house. There is absolutely no reason to showcase this. Um, if I wanted to, I would probably bring in a frame where this is even more blown out to, you know, white it out. I wouldn't white it out 100% completely because I think that starts to look a little fake. Uh, I've mentioned it previously. I want my images to look surreal and professional without them looking overly artificial or fake. And I think if I just make it pure white, that's going to look a little fake. But I might just have just, just a, a little bit of a detail in there just so it looks like there's something on the other side of the glass, but clearly I don't want it this goofy real estate HDR where that window looks like a poster on the wall. Um, not at all. Uh, let's see. Let's double check the uh, shadows here on these other handles. I just want to make sure I'm not, yeah, the colors look good. So nothing too crazy there. Okay, so we took care of that. 
All right. I think we're good as far as highlights and shadows go. Still some adjustments to be made to clean it up. But at this point, I'd say we're 96% of the way done. So now I'm going to blend these together, merge them onto a layer, and we're going to clean up some of these rogue colors, colors that I don't want to be there, but they still might be uh, seeping in. So first and foremost, we're going to look at magentas. I'm going to bump this all the way up. See, there's magentas sneaking in here, and there's nothing magenta in the shot. And it might not even be noticeable, but because there's nothing magenta here in the shot, there's no reason to have them in there at all. So I'm just going to take that all the way down to like negative 80. Blues, I haven't even messed with it. And I'm, my gut's telling me there's a decent amount of blues still in here. Uh, well, I stand corrected. Not as much as I had thought. They are in this the one area where I thought it would be, which is that hot spot on the counter. And then just some other spots around but I'm gonna take that down to negative 80 and I'm gonna bring it back in the pillow because I know the pillow was um, kind of a dark navy blue cyan's we're gonna bump that up too yeah they're popping in the reflection a little bit there on the the bowl but it's a white bowl so a little bit here on the stove just I, I always recommend doing this because you might be surprised where these weird colors are, are, are showing up so I'm gonna take that down about negative 70 negative 80 greens you know what i'm gonna do something weird here that i don't quite do often in my opinion that plant is a little bleak um and that might have been because of the luminosity frame i i brought in so i'm actually going to raise the green because there's nowhere there's no other green in the shot so let's leave that at maybe plus 30 let's go let's go fun here with it let's do plus 50 that works and then like i mentioned we're going to bring it back here in this pillow because it was there just a real subtle change and i think that's it as far as the colors now i mentioned this in another video with scenes like this, this is kind of a cherry on top thing that you can do if you really want to give it this borderline abstract artsy contrasty look. If you want to go overkill, add another layer and you can make this black or white, it doesn't really matter. Because there's so much in this frame that is black, we're going to change this blend mode to color. We're going to add a brush. Let's make this a brush that's a little bit on the hard side and we're going to start to take out some of the colors that's in some of these um, appliances and maybe even the um, uh, the back or backsplash here but as you can see we're, we're going to have to adjust the sliders a little bit there are some warm color tones there's some yellows and reds in this uh, in the black things that are primarily black but we're going to going to go a little crazy here and I'm probably, I'm definitely not going to leave it like this, but when you see images that just look borderline like a rendering, I, my instinct tells me this is what they do. Now, the things that are yellow, like the veining in the countertop, I'm going to leave that already though. I'm not liking it. <laughs> so I'm, not, I'm not liking what I'm doing to my own photo, but let's, let's just, um, let's just do a big piece here on the center. So you know what I'm talking about. Let's just do it here, this background. We'll go fast and loose with it. Come on. All right. So clearly now all the color is gone from any of the reflections, say, in, the, in this faucet. But, there is, uh, but now it just looks black. It is a black faucet. So what we can do, if you want to keep it a little bit natural, is just take the slider take it back down all the way to zero and then maybe just bring it up to taste um, you, you know you might want it somewhere around 30 or 40 I, I'm, I'm not gonna use it too much I'll probably yeah I'll leave, I'll leave it at 25 but that's just something you can do kind of that cherry on top to really give it that I don't know if it makes it better or worse it probably depends on the shot but just that kind of little you know that finishing touch and I think for the most part 
that is it. And then what I'm going to do here, I'm going to uh, merge these to a layer. I'm going to duplicate this. And my personal little touch on top is I'm going to go to um, Color Effects Pro. And the two things that I use on top of this are Pro Contrast and Detail Extractor. And I think if I remember right, you have to be selective on which one stacks on top of the other first. I could be wrong, but I, I think that's what it says. Don't worry, guys. We're almost done. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'm going to leave Detail Extractor at 70. I'm not using any other part on Detail Extractor. I'm going to add Pro Contrast. I put uh, Color Correct Cast the same level that I have a Detail Extractor. Detail Extractor. Correct Contrast, I'll put it 13. And then Dynamic Contrast, I put it 25. And that's it. Hit OK. That's going to do its thing on there for a bit. Double check, make sure I haven't missed anything. I think I got to everyone's comments. If I missed it, if I missed your uh, comment, I didn't address it, just copy and paste and, and throw it back in there. I, I apologize. I feel like I'm in the, the hub of the matrix. I have screens all over here. <laughs> uh, almost done here. And you will notice something. Clearly, we're going to get a little bit more detail. It's going to give it kind of a slightly sharper look but it's going to brighten the overall image too and i want to correct that yeah look at this a little bit more detail but now we've lost some of that atmosphere so with just this layer i'm going to tone this down to about 70 but then i'm going to use a curves adjustment layer i'm going to keep the highlights there i definitely don't want them any brighter than they should be Midtones, I might bump up a tad, but then the um, the shadows I'm going to bring back down. I mean, it's a contrasty space, so I, I want to retain that as much as possible. Definitely don't want it to look flat. And then this is my little thing that I do. If, if you want to give it kind of this almost vintage film type of look, grab the lowest slider and uh, bring it up a tad. I mean, if you want to go crazy, if you want to make it look like a, it was on film, you could bump it up to 15, but I don't want to. So let's just leave it. Let's put it at 5. And that gives it a bit of a bit of a film look. And guys, I think that is it. That is our final product. Um, there might be some additional things that you might touch up, you know, uh, dealer's choice here. Some photographers might remove the lights and the outlets, things like that. Um, client wasn't really too picky about that. <laughs> Nicely done. Thank you. Appreciate that. And, and some of these finishing touches, this is all to taste. This is, I'm not saying this is the absolute, you know, definitive way that it has to be done. But this is my style. And as you can see kind of part of my style is adding that little bit of surrealism with some of with that natural look and the surrealism in this in my opinion is the seats here you get this soft shadow coming at what looks like a 45 degree angle and yet the the window lights are a little bit more or the shadows coming from the windows are a little bit more horizontal so it's kind of this cool mix of both and they're it's these little nitpicks that most people aren't going to ever see but collectively when you view it as a whole, it just gives you that that wow impression. So, um, yeah, for the most part, that is that's pretty much it. Um, if you guys have any additional questions about this, feel free to you can come back to the video, leave them in the comments. Um, I really do appreciate you take you guys taking the time to watch. Feel free to follow me on Instagram at Matthew A Photo. Um, make sure I don't miss anything. Uh, I'll try my best to get to some of the questions as, as best I can. There's, um, thanks for streaming. Great job. Oh, thanks guys. I, I appreciate it. Um, feedback's been decent so far, so more than likely I'll probably do this again. Hopefully it'll be a little bit more smooth. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's it. So yeah, if you got a question, leave it here on the video or feel free to drop me a DM on Instagram. I'll try to get to them as best as possible. Um, I think that's it. So as always, if you made it here to the end, I really do appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. And um, we will uh, second part. Yes, there will be. There will. There, I've got two more parts <laughs> with me and Adam. There's also a, a course that I have to edit 
with that I did with Adam that I, I'm working on next week. So there's a lot. There should be a lot uh, coming down the uh, pike here. But that'll do it for this uh, for this video, guys. I appreciate you taking the time to watch, and we will uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Take care.